Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome for the presentation session. We are here with Vivian Aqua and Gary Turner. Hello, Vivian and Gary. How, do, how, how are you doing today? We are, I mean, I am doing well. I cannot speak on behalf of Gary, right? But thank you for <laughs> inviting me, Arshwashi. Yeah, wonderful invitation. And I'm with Vivian, so it's going to be good. Thanks for the invitation, <laughs> Arshwashi. Um, so I would like to first give the little introduction um, uh, of Vivian. So Vivian is a multicultural, multi-passionate workplace wellness and amplifier DEI advocate. Vivian inspires and empowers people to be their best selves. Uh, and Gary is a change catalyst and a strategic advisor holding 20 years of experience in international commercials for building culture and systems. Also, he's working at the intersection of design, disruption, education, and innovation. So today, both are going to talk about the inclusive leadership. So guys, the stage is yours. Thank you. So Gary, I am curious because, you know, inclusive leadership, when it comes to that, people think that it's only for the leaders, right? For the CEO, for the C-suite, but what can we say about inclusive self-leadership? Is there an ingredient that people have to have to lead themselves when it comes to inclusion? Yeah, it's a great question. And as you know, I've been on a bit of a, uh, a deep dive in the last 12, 18 months around mm -hmm. this topic, not before the tragic murder of George Floyd, but accelerated because of that. And I would say that we very innocently don't look inside of ourselves Mm. around the, the the discussion of inclusion so we look to the outside world to fix some of these systemic challenges to fix inequity to fix bias but do we really have the conversation about how do we feel mm -hmm. when we discuss when i when, when i think about inclusion as gary how, how does that make me feel in my body do i feel afraid do i feel positive do i feel curious so i think we've really got to start inside vivian but i'm not sure we're really doing that as much but i might be completely wrong but i didn't do it for 39 years so that's just me <laughs> no you are not wrong because when i think about what you are sharing right now it reminds me of the song from michael jackson i do think about songs and also as a disclaimer i've been known to talk about food so if i'm talking about food and you are hungry sorry i'm not responsible gary's not responsible we want to entertain you so uh, thinking about the man in the mirror, right? Why are we not putting the mirror on ourselves and think about what steps that we can take to uh, limit bias? So for instance, when you go into, uh, when you see somebody from a job applicant side or when you see a, a, a picture or somebody's profile photo on a CV, how are you going to deactivate your bias? First of all, take a Harvard Association or Harvard Implicit uh, bias test, right? Implicit uh, tests where you can find out your types of biases so that you can know how you can react and also what you can do to deactivate that. Yeah, and it's quite, it's interesting actually. I took one of those tests myself mm -hmm. um, about a month ago. And what's what I found within my body, which was interesting, Vivian, mm -hmm. is I even at some point started to try and game it going, I think I know what it's trying to get me to do yeah. because, because I knew where my bias was going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 so there's really something about allowing yourself from through a vulnerability lens on this. So, you know, not being ashamed, not being yeah. embarrassed, not being afraid, just going through the process with an open heart and open mind, because we are all, we all have bias, right? True. It's just True. some of us have more of them that are more ingrained. Mm -hmm. and therefore we need that little bit extra help maybe to uncover them. Yes, and also you put an emphasis on we all have biases. So the way that sometimes, you know, on social media and also on blogs are posting, like the bias is only directed towards, uh, it's only coming from a certain group of people. But know that everybody has biases, right? And know that everybody also has power. The reason why I'm saying power instead of privilege, because sometimes when you say the word privilege, it can feel like somebody stepping on your toe. But know that everybody has privilege. But then again, some people have more power than others. And we want this to be more equal. So if you have certain powers and you see that you see that certain people are missing in the conversation are missing within the company, 
know that you yourself have the power to challenge that, to invite the different people, go to uh, different universities or invite different inclusive agencies who know how to attract talent with diverse backgrounds. Yeah, it, it's so important. I, I love how you're speaking about the recruitment part. When we, mm -hmm. when you did your first brilliant Amplified DEI Summit last year in 2020, like one of the big things I've been learning, Vivian, myself the last, again, last 12 months, and we spoke about this, is we've really got to focus on mm. that inclusion piece, right? Yeah. It's all important. But, you know, for me, what I've been learning and really starting to embody is, like, Diversity is almost innate, like we look diverse, we have different thought processes, it can be developed. But to be included is very, yeah. is very much a social aspect. It's how do you socially include? How do you consciously include? And I think that, that lens, I think, can be quite a good one to look at yeah. around, are we being conscious about who's in the room? Who's, yeah. get, who's getting access to promotion? Who's getting access to the job interview? Why do we suddenly have a certain demographic over another? Was that intentional? Was it not? So it's just staying really curious, Vivian, I think, more than anything. And also, why are certain people working at the company for six months and already getting promoted to direct being a director? Right. So that's all the challenges that you have to you have to be able to answer when your when your employees or when your team members are answering. Are you providing everybody the right lens? So for the employees or for the future employees that are on this job fair right now, when you uh, apply for a vacancy, ask the following question when they ask you, where do you see yourself within two or three or five years? When you answer that question, have a rebuttal question. How are you going to support me to achieve this goal? What tools or what, 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 how does the toolkit look like? How does my, my career path look like when I apply for this job? How am I going to be safe? Mm, it's really interesting. I'd love to, uh, Miles just put a question in for us, Vivian, mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. how, how do you remove the unconscious bias when you are hiring staff or talent? How do you apply this prior or during the interview itself? Yeah. It helps to be aware to know what your biases are. So all your hidden biases, uh, there are online tests where you can find out what your hidden biases are, but also don't do the interview alone, right? Don't do the interview with a like-minded person. Do an interview with somebody who has different views so that you can challenge the conversation. You can challenge the interview questions that you are asking, but also do the self-work, do your education or hire me and Gary. <laughs> I think it's it's brilliant. And Mal, the other thing I would add again for myself as a as a white male, again, on a learning journey, is how do we, or I, how do mm -hmm. I ask the more challenging questions that maybe I have access to? Yeah. So it's, it's not always so easy for someone that maybe is a black woman or yeah. a disabled colleague to ask that more challenging question mm -hmm. at an interview. So it's on yeah. me as a white male that pr potentially has more access or has less risk of asking the difficult question to mm -hmm. make to go out of my comfort zone and ask that question. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's part of this process as well is to be super conscious who's in the room, who's got access to making those decisions and how do we make sure that the interview candidate is getting the best and fullest and most fair opportunity at that job. True. And as a candidate, know that you have a lot of power. So first of all, you can look on LinkedIn to see if the message of diversity, equity, inclusion matches with the company profile that they have been sharing online, because sometimes they can say something else on the website and the representation is something different. So do your investigation, find out, connect with people beforehand and find out how is the atmosphere? How is the culture? What are the initiatives that the company is doing? And what, what are the things that you value the most when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion? Because my, my values are different than Gary's values and are definitely give, different than your values. So what are your personal values that you, you want to see back? Do you want to see an ERG group that is active and where or maybe set up an ERG group? Oh, where are you taking this now, Vivian? I love it. I think it's 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 so powerful because 
look, look at this another way. I work in the chemicals industry as part mm -hmm. of my day job, okay? It's one of the most undiverse sectors, not just because of a lack of consciousness, which is part of the problem, yeah. but al also because there isn't an intentional focus on how do we get a more diverse pipeline of new engineers, True. of new HR talent, of new chemists. Unless we're going out at very early stage in the talent pipeline and being super intentional with as businesses, as recruiters, with schools and education, this is not a one generational challenge. This is a multi generational no. challenge. And we've True. all got to be super conscious, not just as a systemic level as businesses and um, uh, educators, but every single one of us has, as, as, as um, back to where we started this conversation. Every one of us has got way more power and way yeah. more agency than we ever realize. And I That's think it, it, it's really almost trying to remember that, Vivian, I think. It's not that we need to go out and grab it and necessarily always learn it. It's trying to remember what's already within us that sometimes is covered up by fear or anxiety or, or something else. What do you think or would you challenge or build on that? Well, I want to build on that, knowing that when, in 10 years from now, the majority that is the majority now isn't a majority anymore. And you have people of color who are collectively a majority, right? So if you are excluding them now, they will remember not what you said or what you did, it's how you made them feel. And if that sense is exclusion, then they will remember that. You never know when somebody might be your external stakeholder, maybe your investor, maybe your future uh, manager. So try to think about a way how you make people feel. So if you have to let people down, sometimes people are being ghosted. And I want to say to the recruiters or those from the companies, please don't ghost people. At least be appropriate and say that there's a reason why this is not the right time, but we want you to, we encourage you to keep on applying for future jobs because we really see potential in you, right? There are different ways to keep it personal, but also don't to, um, don't assassinate the, the, the future talent, right? Because it's, it can be heartbreaking when somebody is being let down and it's not hearing anything from you. And there's a great, um, I love how you use Maya Angelou's quote, um, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorites of all time, Vivian. And I also want to use one, if anybody who have not heard of Barry Waymiller, it's a guy, their, their CEO is a guy called, sorry, it is a guy, it's a man called mm -hmm. um, Bob Chapman. And he always shares that treat other people as if they were somebody else's precious child. So think about that for a second. We're in the tech job sphere here. You might be doing high volume recruitment. You might be just recruiting the odd one or two people. But every single one of those applications has got a human being behind it with a family, with a spouse, maybe with children. Yeah. And, I know, and I know it's difficult. I empathize when you're doing high volume recruitment. I can see someone here talking about 1,100 jobs. Yeah. Every one of those 1,100 jobs you're recruiting for has got a family and people attached to it. True. So how can you humanize, to use Vivian's language, how do you humanize your process? Because by humanizing it, you are almost definitely going to make it more inclusive. Definitely. And I also see a question from Eric. Um, Eric is sharing, I am an old white guy who wants the chance to work with people who are not like me. My father was a professor. And before I was 12, I knew people from Israel, Catalonia, Costa Rica, Sweden. I love that combination. What would you say about that, Gary? Do you know something? I would say, brilliant, brilliant question, Eric, and I appreciate your your openness uh, mm -hmm. and your and your intention. Definitely. I had this very, very same challenge and still do, to be honest. We're brought up within certain sectors. We're brought up within certain, um, you know, just demographics. It happens naturally. You've got to go out of your way to drive diversity into your networks. So you may not, so my invitation is, check, look at your LinkedIn, if you're on LinkedIn or if you've got yeah. other community networks, Go and use those, ask questions, and just go out and reach out to people. I'll give you an example, very, very quick one. Following the tragic murder of George Floyd, and Vivian was part of the reason that I did this exercise, I reviewed my LinkedIn. I reviewed my LinkedIn profile. Um, I was like, I got 6,000 connections. Of the first 1,000 that came up, I had four black men as mm. part of my network, okay? Now, that told me that the algorithms are going to be feeding me a very small amount of diverse perspective. Yeah. If I'm not now, this doesn't mean go out and grab a you know three black men, four disabled, five that are LGBT. That's not what I'm saying. But consciously look at 
at your networks, look at LinkedIn, look at groups where you think they might be looking at diverse, intentionally diverse um, backgrounds mm -hmm. and connect with some of those people. Go to yeah. them, so just, just connect with them, drop them a very personal, like message you're sharing here and just ask the question, would you mind connecting with me for 10 minutes? I'd love to learn more about you. And I'd love to share you a bit, share you a bit more about me and what I'm trying to do with, with my next step. Humanity, honestly, always, always trumps trying to be too clever. Be intentional, though. And also, when you are on LinkedIn, don't just click on connect, right? Because I don't know why you want to connect with me. <laughs> if you want me to have some kind of relationship with you, friendship, though, uh, business-wise, you need to share why you are connected with me. So do a little research and share that. And also when you are applying for a job, right? Do your research about the company, do your research about uh, who, your, your upcoming team members, your potential team members, do a research on what you want to do as well. And I see also another question, how to succeed in a manager interview while no prior management experience, right? So, I I will kick off with this one. I would say everybody is a leader. Everybody is a leader. So if you don't have the management management experience in your job, what are you doing within your network, right? Ask your network, what are the management skills that they might see in you that you don't see are within you? Maybe you're part of a network club or maybe you're hosting something or organizing something, right? Bring out those extra curricular activities that you're doing so that you can sell that in your interview. Gary, do you have yeah, something to say? Brilliant. I, I think it's a great response. And the other thing I'd add to this as well, um, Charlin, is the next generation, like we've got technology. We're using this brilliant platform right now okay, yeah. to connect and meet and to share and hopefully adding some value. This is the future, okay? Like we need maths, we need science, like we need those. But we also need more than, as we have more technology, empathy, listening, inclusion, vulnerability, yeah, listening. It's really our humanistic skills that are going to be the ones that make the difference between whether or not we're successful or not in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I would invite you to be brave and over-index if you go for an interview on those aspects of you. You might not have the leadership experience of managing headcount yet. But I bet your bottom dollar, you're leading your household, you're leading your sports team, you're leading yourself. Bring your, bring the whole of you into that interview and then make it relevant to the job that you're applying for. Yeah. Practice that with a friend as well. Have that conversation with a friend so that it won't be the first time that you're having that conversation and the confidence will be oozing out. Also, another question. I see Eric sharing, I worked in wealth management recruiting and have no experience in tech recruiting. How do I get companies to give me a chance? And I would say, get to learn a little bit more about the tech industry. But then again, um, it is about selling, right? Connecting, creating that relationship and also learning a little bit more about the tech industry. So be concise, be concrete. What part of the tech industry do you want to uh, be active in as a recruiter? Yeah, and the, the quick thing I'd add to that as well, Eric, is what what's the transferable element? It's like, so mm. I see, I see, sort of, okay, recruiting and recruiting. There's going to be some commonality, yeah. regardless of the sector that you're working within. So, what are those core skills that are transferable from wealth management recruiting into tech recruiting? So that's your base load. And then, as Vivian says, reinforcing that, go and do the work of understanding the bits you might be missing and then go and name that as you go for the interview. I'm bringing this with me. However, I know I need to get better at this, but you're not going to want to miss out on me, Eric, because I've got this, 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 and this, which yeah. is totally transferable. Also look at role models online, right? There are so many role models uh, in, your, in the industry that you want to uh, wander in. What are they doing? What are they saying? connect with them. Maybe they want to, they can be a mentor for you, right? So look what your role models are doing. What are they saying? What are they talking about? And tech is, is huge. What kind of tech? Do you want to be uh, a coder or you want to do Java or you, do you want to look under the hood or do you want to do something with internet? What is your tech domain? So good. And do, what I'm really enjoying about this, and I know we're coming towards the end now, Vivian, mm -hmm. is there is this inclusion inclusive yeah. leadership 
Yeah. If you if you do not first include yourself in your mm -hmm. thinking, if you don't include what you want yeah. to get out of it, if you don't include where you see yourself, you're just throwing stuff at a dartboard. So yeah. really go inside first. I think that's a real common theme that's popped up as we've answered a lot of these questions, Vivian. Anything else from Definitely. your side? Definitely. I enjoyed this conversation. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Vivian. And thank you, uh, Avashi, as well. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much also to both of you for in this informative talk. I think there's a lot to take away from uh, from this speech. Um, and I'm sure that all the audience that are listening to us would definitely have some benefit out of it. Thank you. Bye, everybody.